Okay, so here we are. We're going to pick up where we left off last, I don't know, maybe, actually maybe a few weeks ago, when I uh, showed you guys how to install Linux. Um, now we're going to go and uh, do the download and install of the SRCDS server, uh, and uh, the CSGO server specifically. Um, Alright, so here we go. Let me log in. Alright, again, this is the interface of a fresh out of the box um, GNOME Ubuntu install um, desktop. This little bar up here is actually just because again I'm running from within a virtual machine. Um, it does come with all kinds of programs that you might expect in any other operating system. File browser, um, chat, email, and uh, web browser. But again you will be living out of the terminal by default. That terminal is not in there. I have added it. So what I will do um, if you're just right here, you should go up to the search bar, type in terminal, grab it, you can drag it over here to your, uh, right click and add to your favorites, or you can drag it over to your favorites. Let's go ahead and launch. Okay, so here is the terminal. And this is, for all intents and purposes, your new home. Let's go ahead and make this, uh, bigger and easier to read for you. Okay, there we go. So now here we are in our terminal, your new home for managing your file or your uh, Counter-Strike Go server. Okay, so uh, first things first, a lot of people um, feel like they have to do every install and run everything as a root user. You do not need to do that. Um, you will need root level access um, in general uh, to because it, we're gonna have to install some dependencies if they're not already um, on your particular distribution um, this is basically just so that we can compile and run uh, the uh, the game it's or the game server itself um, or at least you know, SRCDS manages all that. You don't do any of that stuff manually, but the nevertheless, the uh, dependencies need to be there. Um, so before we go any further, from whatever uh, your administrator account is, you can do sudo apt get. Actually, let me take a step back. Depending on uh, whether you are in um, uh, Red Hat or um, Debian distribution, the dependencies have different names, and the package management systems are different package management system being the thing by which you will acquire the dependency package. So here's the command for uh, Ubuntu and other Debian based operating or, uh, distributions which I personally am using. Here's the command for Red Hat and CentOS which is another very popular one. And next is for the 64-bit version of Red Hat CentOS. Okay, so again, this is going to be installed on um, a 64-bit version of uh, Ubuntu. So we're going to use this. Now, because we're not running as root user at the moment, we have to do sudo in front. And again, this is why you need to be running from an administrator account, because if you are not, you do not have uh, sudo access or sudo privileges. So we'll sudo app get install these dependencies. Just type in the wrong password. Okay. So I already have them installed, but this is what you would have needed to do to get them installed if you didn't. Um, so the dependencies are there now, you can worry about you know who you are logged in as and all of that stuff so by default on this virtual machine if I type in who am I it shows that I am username steam already that's the only that's my administrator user that's everything um, but for a lot of people they you know maybe under the username John or Jim or whatever just some other random username uh, I would recommend not installing SRCDS uh, and the CSGO server as a root user uh, in fact, Steam recommends, and um, I recommend making your own username Steam if you don't have one already. 
Now when you do that through the command line, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either add user or you can user add. Okay, now what's the difference here? So one of them is a friendly front end interface that allows you to create a home directory and do all these things. Uh, one of them is not. If you forget which is which, then you can very easily look at the Linux man pages. So you type in man add user. And what does this say? Add user, add group. They add users and groups of system according to command line options and configuration information. They are friendlier front ends to low level tools like user add. So uh, user add is the low level tool and add user is the friendlier front end. So if I were to do the opposite, man, user add, user add is low level utility for adding users. On Debian, administrators should usually use add user instead. So it's easy for us to figure out which one we want. And in this case, we want to do the one that is less <laughs> difficult. Again, add user, the friendlier front end. So if you don't have add user already, you can just type in add user and you have to do it from a ute, I mean from an um, administrator or, um, or root level uh, user to begin with, but um, that would be the way to do that. Okay, now let's assume you have done that and you actually have your username Steam installed. You're going to want to switch user to Steam. I'm already there, so it's not going to do anything for me. But that's how you would switch users, SU, and then the name of the user you want to switch to. Okay, now you're there. The other option is to simply log out and log back in, which is right up here in the corner. Log out and log back in is the right person. Okay, um, I basically had logged in twice, so I exited out of one of them. Um, but again, switch user will allow you to do it with the command line, or you can log out and log back in. So at this point, you've done a few things. You have installed the dependencies, which was, if you look at our history, it was this one right here. sudo app get installed, lib32 gcc1. That um, you know, allowed you to provide all the dependencies to the 64-bit version of um, SRCDS to allow it to run um, all these older 32-bit dependencies because apparently the program has a lot of 32-bit dependencies and you have um, added a user and switched to that user. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, what you want to do is get to your home directory. Uh, by default, when you open a terminal, you're going to end up at your home directory, but if you forget how to get there um, it's fairly easy to get to or to uh, to do so by default most home directories are going to be in forward slash home um, because my name is steam this would be my home directory and if I do pwd print working directory I'm at home steam so you can either um, change directory to home steam or you can do change directory into uh, the home variable uh, which expands into just this that takes the same place again right there or CD tilde that again takes us home so if I were at a different directory let's say I was at desktop and so home steamed up desktop I can get to where I want by typing CD home now if I print working directory I'm right where I want to be. Okay, um, just in case you're wondering, you can clear the screen by hitting Control plus L or typing in clear. Okay, so now that that is done, um, you're going to want to do one of two things. You're going to want to make, or you'll want to do one thing first anyway. You're going to want to make a folder uh, where you can install all of your uh, um, Steam files and uh, to do that we're going to use the program Makedir. Now because I've actually done this once before <laughs> I'm going to actually remove uh, the existing Steam CMD folder that I have made earlier. Okay so if I look there is no Steam CMD. I'm starting over from scratch. So I'm going to Makedir Steam CMD 
now we are here where we want to be print working directory here home steam steam cmd so now that we're there what we want to do is we want to get the install files um, to do that you're going to use this command w get program and this file right there so it's going to download that file all right i know 10.5 megs a second you're jealous megabytes too um actually peak higher than that like 18 megabytes a second um so we have downloaded the or the uh, file we want if we type ls we list the contents of this directory and you see it's right there um this is coming in a, what you would call like a tarball form um and it's similar to a zip file so to unzip it you will enter this command tar dash xvzf i honestly don't remember exactly what all of these commands are for extract verbose so it's going to tell you what it's doing i don't remember the in the effort for but um tar dash xvzf now if you want to uh see what the commands are or, or what those options are then you can very easily type in man uh, tar and if you look down you know they're all listed here okay so f for file yep all right here so just if you want to satisfy your curiosity at this moment i am not too <laughs> too concerned about that okay so let's get back to where we were tar xvzf steam cmd if you know where that beeping is it's whenever there's an error it makes a beeping noise if you have partially written out a um a file name you can hit tab to autocomplete and if i didn't in that case i didn't have the uh the name spelled correctly so it gave me an error noise okay so it went ahead and extracted everything now I have these four files. I have a folder that was just created, two files that were just extracted, which are um, script files, and then I have this tarball file, which I no longer need anymore, so I can remove it, actually. So I don't need it. It's gone. Just clearing things up. Now one thing I want to show you, if I do ls-la, which um, gives you all the details, then you can see these green files have some special things about them. One, they have, uh, they're, they're green and executable because they have this X or executable bit. Um, if I were to minus X or subtract the executable bit, from steamcmd.sh, then it's going to show up as a black file. No longer executable. What that means is if I try to run it, it doesn't let me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the executable bit back. Okay. Now that's important because for some people, after they extract the file it may lose its um, executable bit and you have to put it back on in order for you to run steam cmd um, now another thing you're going to need to do is uh, you're going to have to define a location for your counter-strike go dedicated server files so um, and this will be important for when you actually finally launch steam cmd so what I'm going to do from here, from this directory, I'm going to add an additional couple of directories. So make dir game server files. Um, I just kind of assume that at some point you may have more than one server. If I change directories into game server files, I'll make another directory for CSGO ODS. Oh, I misspelled that. So I will rename it. Use the MV command to do that to rename. Okay, so that's that's right. Now, importantly, we're going to need this. Um, we're going to need the full path to CS:GO DS. So if I change directory to CS:GO DS and I do print working directory, 
I get the full path. So I'm going to copy and paste, copy this because I'll need to paste it later. Okay. So now let's go back, back again. Now we're at the Steam CMD directory where, if you look at the files, here's Steam CMD.sh. That's the file you're going to run to do all of your setup. So we'll do Steam CMD.sh. Okay, Steam CMD updated. Now it's ready to go. So from this point, what you have to do is you actually have to log in. If I try to, if I try to install CSGO right now, it's going to tell me I'm not logged in. So what you do is log in, anonymous. You don't actually need to um, log in with an actual user account. If you do need one, you can set up another free account. You don't actually have to own the game. So log in anonymous. Boom, we're logged in. Now at this point, um, before you install the actual game files or the server files, you have to tell it where to. So force, install, dir, and then I'm going to right click and paste rather than trying to memorize it. It's right there. That's where we're installing everything. Now Steam CMD knows where to install the Counter-Strike Go DS files. Now that I've logged in and told the uh, Steam CMD program where to install, going to app update 740 validate. App update will either install or update the application with this application ID 740 and 740 is the application ID for um, Counter-Strike Go and then validate the install files. And here we go. This will take a few minutes so I'll probably be fast forwarding through this. I'll we'll just go ahead and quit. Kind of get ourselves reoriented. We're in the Steam CMD directory. We need to change directories to the game server files. CSGO DS. All right. And again, just another important thing if uh, for whatever reason SRCDS run or any of these other files, except for the EXE, you won't be using that since you're in Linux. Uh, if any of these are not set with the executable bit, then they will not run. Um, so it's worth doing ls la if they're not running because it's a simple fix. Change mod plus x. So that's how you would fix it. In this case, the executable bit is already set and they will execute without problems. So um, at this point, pretty much everything's completely ready to go. There's not a whole lot needed to uh, to get running. Um, can go ahead and um, launch the server pretty easily. That's our CDS run, and plus there's a series of commands that come after um, that. Uh, to be honest, I have saved elsewhere. So let me go ahead and uh, find that for you. Uh, should be my history, actually. So history, right here. There we go. So I can copy and paste it, or I could do 52, and it comes back up automatically ran for me. <laughs> that wasn't my intention. Alright, so I'll quit out of there. But I copied and pasted it. Okay, so here's what's happening here. SRCDS run is the actual script that launches the application. Um, the dot forward slash in front just means that you're looking for an application inside of the current working directory. You either have to have that or you have to spell out the entire working directory in front of SRCDS run in order to run it. So short, this is the shorthand that you're going to see for a lot of SRC or a lot of Linux applications that are run. Um, dot forward slash, and then the name of the script. Um, and the rest of this, these are kind of the basics, um, the basic options that you add on um, or provide to the SRCDS run um, script. This just tells you the game CSGO. It's going to enable the console, um, game type 0, game mode 1. Basically, um, just tells us that we're going to use the, uh, the 
competitive classic mode. Um, we specified the map group from which to draw the maps and the default map to start out on. If I were to, if I were to run this, it's going to launch and everything should work exactly as we had expected. If I type in status, just like you would in your game console, you'll see that we are on map DE dust 2. As you would expect, there's zero humans, zero bots, 10 person max like you would expect on a um, competitive mode. Here's the IP address, along with the port. There you go, That that is the basics to get things running. Um, now, just one last little useful bit of information um, because it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to type this in every time and you're not going to want to do it you'll probably want to create a script uh, what is a script if I were to show you the contents of SRCDS run oops don't need to do that this is an example of a script Okay, this is a more advanced script. You're not going to be doing anything like this, but we will make a very simple script. First, let's create a file called easyrun.sh. If you see, there's easyrun.sh. All right, now let's edit easyrun.sh. Actually, before I do that, let me copy and paste this whole thing because I'm going to be reusing this. So I'm going to copy. Okay. I'm going to have to paste that later. So we can edit easyrun.sh. The easiest way to do it would be to use uh, nano. It's an easy to use X or text editor. So nano easyrun.sh. Open it up. You'll paste that in there. And in the future when you run it, it's going to automatically execute this code. So in order to make sure this happens reliably, you have to include what's called the shebang. Okay, this is the shebang that tells the script to be ex to be calling the, um, the bash shell, which is kind of like a, I don't know, it's how the user interacts with the command line. There's a few other shells that are similar to it, but bash is the most uh, common one. Again, the stuff I was doing, all that LS, CD, PWD, all those things are part of the bash or, um, programs that are invoked by the bash shell. Um, and then there's a few other features. It kind of works almost like a little mini programming language when you start to, and it is a little mini programming language once you start to learn some of the more advanced features. But anyway, long story short, this is the shebang you need to include at the top of the file. Um, so after you put in the shebang, you can add this meaning that you can modify this as you, you see fit, add your Archon information, add your port, all these other things which we'll get into later. Um, and you never have to type this in again. So let's write it out, control O. Let's, yes, let's go ahead and save the file name, easyrun.sh. Now we can exit, control X. All right, now again, if I try to easy run, It says permission denied. Just want me to do that. If you remember correctly, we talked about adding the executable bit. Now, if I look, Easy Run is now green. And it'll load automatically. It's a very simple script. If you see, again, DE Dust defaults to port 27015, which by chance you will have to uh, both open the firewall locally on the computer uh, and on your firewall or your router of your router, but that's a different tutorial. Okay, there you go. So that's the basics, getting everything running, including creating a nice little simple script to launch your server.